There are many big rivers in the world, like the Amazon, Ganges, and Mississippi. But if we count all the water flows from tiny creeks to huge rivers, there could be nearly three million of them on Earth. Have you ever thought about what happens when two rivers meet, or other strange things in rivers, like colorful ones or big holes? Put on your life vests, because we're diving into the world of weird river phenomena. Mystery Falls Rivers are usually for fun activities like swimming and kayaking. But imagine paddling downstream and suddenly hitting a big hole. It sounds strange because rivers are supposed to be water channels, so how can they have holes? Well, there's a river called Los Gachas in Colombia, near a mountain town called Guadalupe, with lots of holes in it. These holes look like they were made by people, but they're completely natural. The river is very shallow, and its bottom is super slippery, like walking on butter. People often accidentally fall into these holes. Some are shallow, only a few inches deep, while others are over six feet deep, big enough for whole families. The river also has a red color due to a chemical in the rocks, not a disaster. It makes you wonder what else might be hiding in those holes, but the mystery remains who or what created these giant holes. Well, it turns out these holes are natural plunge pools and they're formed by waterfalls. A plunge pool is a deep hole in the riverbed at the bottom of a waterfall. It's created when the waterfall's water hits the rocks below and wears down the riverbed. Loose rocks also fall into the pool, making a sort of rock blender that deepens the hole. Over time, the waterfall also erodes itself and moves backward, leaving behind these plunge pools. In the Los Gachas area, there are other waterfalls like Cascaras del Caballero, and it seems that these waterfalls caused the holes in Los Gachas. The original waterfall that made these holes is gone now, but it left us with this unique riverbed, like a hot tub. Doomsday Weather these days, the special effects in movies look incredibly real. For example, there's a scene with a river of sand that looks so lifelike, you might think it's not fake. But here's the surprising part. It's actually real. Back in November 2015, people in the Aruba Akali Desert were shocked to find a fast-moving flow that looked like sand. But when they touched it, they discovered something strange. It wasn't sand at all. It was ice. Yes, you heard that right. Ice in the desert. It might sound impossible, especially since the Aruba Kali Desert is the largest continuous sand desert on Earth, but it wasn't a mistake or a tourist playing with a hotel ice machine. It happened because, believe it or not, it does rain in the desert from time to time. Recently, a big storm with golf ball-sized hail hit the area. Now let's dive into how this wild weather event could occur. Hail is formed during thunderstorms with strong updrafts. Warm air in a cloud pushes water droplets higher up into the really cold part of the atmosphere, where it freezes. Thunderstorm clouds can even form as high as 40,000 feet, much higher than an airplane flies. At this height, the water droplets turn into ice. The heavy ice falls lower in the cloud, where more water droplets stick to it. Depending on how strong the updraft is, it can get swept back up into the cold part of the cloud, where more water droplets freeze onto it. This cycle continues, adding more layers of ice to the hailstone. Eventually, these hailstones become too heavy for the storm's updraft to hold, so they fall to the ground. The stronger the storm, the bigger the hail. In the case of this desert, a super thunderstorm stirred up by the hot desert air amplified the hail-making process. This made the hailstones grow to the size of golf balls. Luckily, these big hailstones fell in the desert, where there weren't any buildings or cars to damage. If they fell in a city, it would have been a different story, because hail this size can cause over a billion dollars in damage each year. Now, you might wonder why these hailstones look like they were flowing like a river. Well, there's a simple explanation for that. They were carried by an actual river underneath them. These hailstones gathered in streams that are part of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, which run through the desert. The scorching desert heat, with temperatures averaging 117 degrees Fahrenheit, caused the hailstones to melt partially. As they melted, they picked up sand, making it look like a river of sand from a distance. Unfortunately, freak weather events like this may become more common due to climate change, so it's a good idea to be prepared and maybe carry an armored umbrella, because you never know what might fall from the sky next. Too salty If you're searching for a river or a lake, you'd probably look on land, right? Well, it turns out there are hidden rivers in a rather unexpected place, underwater. This happens because of certain geological processes. 
In some parts of the ocean floor, you can find thick deposits of salt in the shape of white streams. When the seawater above starts seeping into this dense salt, it warms and forms concentrated brine. This brine is much denser than regular seawater and sinks into depressions on the ocean floor, creating huge ultra-salty underwater lakes and even rivers. The density of the brine prevents it from mixing with the seawater above, and it becomes severely lacking in oxygen. When a fish enters a brine pool, they try to breathe, but due to the total lack of oxygen, they immediately start suffocating. At the same time, they go into toxic shock from the high salt concentration. If the fish can't swim back up to the oxygenated seawater in time, the brine pool becomes their final resting place. Scientists on remote-controlled underwater expeditions have found brine pools filled with the remains of fish, crabs, and other creatures that ventured too close. What's even stranger is that the dead organisms are preserved for years without decaying, because once again, there's no oxygen to fuel the decomposition process. So every brine pool seems to come with its own fish graveyard nearby. They definitely didn't sing about that in Under the Sea, probably because it would have turned The Little Mermaid into a horror movie. Missed Opportunity Now in 2021, beachgoers in La Jolla, California were enjoying a sunny day when they spotted something on the horizon that looked like a massive tsunami. It was a towering wall of fog rolling across the ocean at incredible speed, reaching the shoreline in just 15 minutes. But as they braced for impact, they realized it wasn't a wave. It was a gigantic fog bank, nature's rather terrifying prank. This phenomenon is called a fog tsunami, and it can happen on beaches worldwide. It occasionally looks like something out of a disaster movie, ready to engulf a city. In La Jolla, this intimidating fog bank stretched 26 miles along the coastline and was so tall that it blocked out the sun. These fog banks can become so enormous that they're even visible from space. Fortunately, the fog itself is harmless, but it can make it challenging to see anything. When giant waves of fog like this descend over cities, Visibility drops instantly, posing risks for drivers, pilots, ships, and even cyclists. Fog tsunamis often form quickly on sunny, cloudless days, seemingly out of nowhere. However, they are a type of advection fog. This happens during the summer when long sunny days heat up the land, creating warm, moist air currents. This warm air then passes over the cold ocean surface, causing the water vapor to condense into a massive blanket of fog. The unique wall shape of the fog tsunami is due to a sea breeze front where hot air from the land meets colder air from the sea. These opposing air masses create an invisible boundary that shapes the fog into a large wall, which gradually moves toward the land. Nature indeed works in mysterious ways. Swim a rainbow Remember those colorful Skittles commercials that told you to taste the rainbow? Well, forget about tasting it because in Colombia's Rainbow River, located in Sierra de la Macarena National Park, you can actually swim in a rainbow. Now, I don't mean in a pool filled with melted skittles, I mean in a real river. This unique river, known as Cano Cristales, stretches for 62 miles and includes waterfalls, rivers, and streams. At certain times of the year, particularly between June and November, the river comes alive with a dazzling display of colors. The water takes on vibrant hues of purples, pinks, yellows, and greens, almost like a living painting. What's responsible for this spectacular display is a rare aquatic plant that grows in the water called Macarenia clavigera. However, this plant doesn't follow the same script every year. Due to the delicate balance of the ecosystem, the plant's growth and the colors it displays depend on factors like rainfall, temperature, and sunlight. As a result, the river showcases different color combinations each year. One year you might see deep crimson, and the next year it might be bright green or yellow. The Macarenia clavigera is an exceptionally rare plant, and its unique nature is supported by the ancient rock formation of the Cano Cristales riverbed. This rock formation is believed by some to be over 1.7 billion years old and was shaped by sediment from ancient rivers, making it rich in minerals like phosphorus, iron, and quartz. This mineral-rich bedrock provides the perfect conditions for the plant to thrive. Naturally, a place as stunning as Cano Cristales attracts tourists, even if they do have to hike through the wilderness to get there. Influencers might be eager for their Rainbow River selfie, but they'll have to leave their makeup behind. To protect the environment, park authorities now prohibit visitors from wearing any chemical products that could contaminate the water, including sunscreen, insect spray, deodorant, and makeup. 
But honestly, who needs makeup when you have the vibrant natural colors of this river to admire? Before moving to number one on this list, take a look at this. Nestled near the Mount Hachimantai summit in northeastern Japan is a lake mythically believed to be the meeting place of two banished love-struck dragons. Each winter, ice forms atop the Kagami Numa Lake and snow piles over its frozen surface. During the spring thaw, pressure from the water's depths causes the snow to form only in the middle of the lake, transforming the circular lake's appearance into a giant eye with a ring of open water around its melted pupil. The annual phenomenon lasts barely a week between late May and early June, just before the ice melts entirely. Out for a spin You might have heard the belief that if you spot a tornado on the horizon and there's a lake or river in between, you'll be safe, because tornadoes can't cross water. However, that's not quite accurate. In reality, bodies of water can give rise to their own versions of tornadoes known as water spouts. Water spouts usually form when tornadoes move from land to water or develop over water during thunderstorms. Despite their name, water spouts are not tornadoes, they're more like swirling columns of air. They don't suck up water like a giant vacuum as some might imagine. But beware, there's an even more dangerous type of water spout to watch out for when you're on the ocean, lake or creek. Imagine you're sailing and suddenly you see a strange rippling spot on the water's surface. When this happens, it's a sign that you should get away quickly. This spot is caused by a descending column of rotating wind from a cumulus cloud. Usually, light and dark bands start swirling around the dark spot, and a ring of sea spray forms. This is known as a fair weather water spout, and it can grow larger and stronger over time. The average fair weather water spout has a diameter of about 165 feet and can have winds of up to 50 miles an hour. Although these water spouts are not as powerful as land tornadoes, which can have winds ranging from 112 to 206 miles per hour, you should still be cautious. They can lift light things into the air, even fish or a turtle. A water spout can whip fish out of the water and carry them up into the clouds. These fish might then travel over land with the winds until they fall back to the ground. People as far as 100 miles away from the water have reported fish falling from the sky. You could call it fish sticks from the clouds. Fortunately, most water spouts don't last very long. They usually only stick around for about 2 to 20 minutes before they weaken and disappear. However, there have been some really big ones that measured up to 330 feet across and lasted for up to an hour. Regardless of their size, big water spouts can be dangerous for ships. In 2006, a water spout in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, flipped over a 32-foot catamaran, lifting it 25 feet into the air and spinning it around before gently placing it back in the ocean. Thankfully, no one got hurt in that surprising twist of events. So which water-based phenomenon did you find most interesting? Would you prefer to come across a fog tsunami or a water spout? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.